In this video, I'm going to share with you some really helpful tips and exercises to deal with gymnast wrist, which is an inflammation or an irritation of the growth plate at the end of the wrist that a lot of gymnasts, cheerleaders, dancers, circus artists, people kind of just doing acro for fun on their own, they really struggle with. And as a sports physical therapist, I've seen a lot of people have this. So I want to share with you exercises and some tips that are the most helpful to get out of pain and get back to the thing that you want to do. Before we dive into that, though, a couple really important things. One is that we are closing in on the finish of our huge giveaway for the end of the month of May, which will be a set of free tickets to the 2023 Shift Symposium. And then also somebody can pick a choice of their course they want to listen to from shifts. So we have all sorts of great courses on flexibility, strength conditioning development, medical stuff, any of those courses you want. One lucky winner is going to get picked to get not only the shift symposium tickets, they will also win one of those courses. The way to enter that automatically free of charge, head down to the comment section, put in hashtag 24 shift within the first 24 hours of this video coming out, you will be automatically entered to win. We'll go back through the last six or seven videos, uh, try to find someone who's commented the most, put them in a random picker. We'll pick out whoever wins. We'll email you, let you know what's going on and you have that access to that free course. So also, if you're the first time back to the channel in a while, head down to the bottom and just make sure you hit that notification bell. Make sure you subscribe so that way you see all the information coming out. But also, if you're gunning for that free giveaway, the more times you enter throughout the week to week contest, the more chances you have to win. And that obviously is something many people are looking for. So without further ado, let's check out some of these exercises. Okay, so first thing, nobody wants to hear this, right? Everybody wants what's the best stretch? What's the best exercise? And I'll give you those, right? But I can promise you, if you don't take a step back from the things that are causing the actual problem, none of the exercises matter. Okay, so I work with so so many gymnasts who come to me literally two weeks before their biggest meet of the year, they can barely move their wrists. They're like, give me a stretch, give me an exercise, right? And unfortunately, the cattle has uh, gone out the pasture. It's too far gone. We can't get it back all the way. So what we really need to do is think about proactively when things first start to hurt, what's the first thing causing your pain? That's the time when you want to react, okay? So we're going to have to rest for at least two weeks away from impact to really make sure this calms down. Because what this injury is, it's an inflammation of the growth plate of the radius, right? The open growth plate in a young athlete is the most vulnerable. It's not fully formed. It has a lot of different things that are causing it to be a little bit more vulnerable. So when you take that and you put high force skills and high repetitions on a wrist that is not designed for weight bearing like the ankle is, that's really where problems come up. And it can really quickly get out of control fast. So so we're going to really want to think about a long timeline of two weeks of no impact, doing some exercises, doing some physical therapy, doing some rehab work, and then two weeks of softer impact, maybe getting back into basics and softer surfaces with a little bit of exposure a couple days per week, then finally back into some medium surfaces, and then finally back into hard uh, surfaces, but with less volume. Okay. So if we don't really have this as our starting point, nothing else really matters. So please take your time. Please really back off from the things that bother you and then work with a medical provider to really understand what the next path forward is. I don't want to scare people with this, but sometimes these get really out of control control and it can cause someone to have to get surgery because they have a stress fracture of this side, right? If we have this pressure of this bone so much and this other bone, which normally is not taking pressure in the weight bearing, as you can see this gap here, if this one closes prematurely and it causes the outside bone to keep growing, keep growing, you can have some really big problems on the TFCC, which is a ligament here on a stress fracture of this side. It gets really into a pain in the butt fast. So Again, not trying to scare anybody here, but I just want to really expose you to the reality of what happens if you just keep pushing through saying, oh, it's just growing pains. No big deal. Okay. With that out of the way, let's actually get into some exercises that are useful. Okay. The first thing I always give to someone is going to be some forearm soft tissue. Okay. The forearm muscles on the inside and the front of the arm oftentimes are the gripping muscles. And many times people have very, very stiff forearm muscles. So what happens is it doesn't let our wrist go the other way over time. This is in a combination with if an athlete is growing very rapidly, right? Their bones are probably growing faster than their muscles can keep up with. And they oftentimes can not have that flexibility to fully get their wrist back into a 90 degree angle. And so what's really important is that we start with just doing some soft tissue work to the inside of the arm and then stretching that soft tissue as well. Now, the very important thing to see here, and you'll see it when this camera comes all the way around, is that you can see that Heather is grabbing her thumb. She's grabbing her fingers and her entire wrist, right? You want to make sure that you're stretching your fingers and your thumb and your wrist at the same time, because many of the muscles that are stretched in this stretch go all the way up to the inside of the elbow, which is the same spot where we're massaging here. We want to make sure all the muscles of the forearm are getting quite a bit of soft tissue care and stretching because those are the things that get extremely stiff when you're swinging on bars, you're doing a lot of grip work, you're balancing handstands, right? That is really what's oftentimes limiting someone's wrist to go the other way. And it's why that wrist bone starts to get a little sore. So 30 to 60 seconds, two sets is probably good every single day. We want to make sure we're not going too hard on these or overstretching to cause pain. We also want to make sure we're actually doing these every single day. And we want to make sure that we're not just doing the soft tissue work. We're doing these types of stretches over here. If we can tolerate it, I really like to see someone do this in a closed chain position. So you can see here, she has her forearms kind of turned backwards and she's really extending all the way through her elbows and her wrists. She has hyperextended elbows, but she's being careful of that. It's a soft elbow extension. But again, thumb is down, fingers are down. She's rocking backwards. This is a really great way to stretch these forearm muscles 
muscles in a great way, but oftentimes that doesn't feel awesome on the wrist. So I would feel uh, start somebody here with its open chain version and just doing the soft tissue work here for maybe a week. Then I would transfer over and see if this one is more possible. Okay. So that's the first thing really got to get that soft tissue. That's maybe limiting the wrist extension fully, uh, kind of relaxed and kind of ready to rumble. The second thing that sometimes happens here is that oftentimes the wrist joint itself can be the thing that's stiff. And now I pointed out in this picture here, right? If you have someone who has a really irritated kind of cranky wrist joint, what can happen sometimes the, the soft tissue, the synovial fluid, the joint capsule can become very, very irritated and cranky. Once we let that calm down, the inflammation is gone. Oftentimes there's still a stiffness existing in the wrist. So what we want to do in this situation is we want to do some wrist glide. If she's putting her hand on top of her other hand. She's gently lifting up to the ceiling in this pressure this way, and she's leaning over and I put a still shot in because I really want people to see the fact that she's kind of holding that wrist in place and leaning over her body weight, right? So holding down this wrist, lifting up and gently rocking back and forth will open up the joint a little bit and gap the joint to help kind of get that free motion back and forth without maybe irritating some of the bones. So soft tissue is one piece of it, but then wrist joint mobility itself is very, very important. If you're an older athlete who's getting into circus or handstands or gymnastics for the first time, oftentimes the growth plate is not the thing that's the cranky because it's closed. It's the actual wrist joint itself. Okay. So making sure we're rocking back and forth two sets of 10 every single day, trying to make sure that we're not putting too much weight on the hand, but we're also not pushing through into pain, going nice and easy, nice and slow back and forth every single day will help just kind of warm that joint up and get some synovial fluid moving around. So soft tissue is really important. First wrist glides are really important. Second, and then third is we're actually going to really want to do some local elbow strength. Okay. So just doing passive stuff already, just doing soft tissue stuff already is really good, but it's not going to get you back to the thing you want to do. We want to rebuild the tolerance of the wrist and of the elbow joint to handle force, right? I don't think these exercises are like the miracle cure that they're going to magically make your pain go away. But after you've rested for a couple of weeks, we want to try to load and strengthen the wrist specifically before we put it back into a weight bearing and high force situation. So I often find that doing dumbbell work with hammers or different things are really easy. This is a fancy thing called a pronator which you can find online, but you don't really need to have it. You can just do an ankle weight with some uh, on a hammer. That's totally fine. But we just want to load the elbow and the wrist joint in a bunch of different ways to stress the soft tissue that's maybe been resting for the last two weeks and get that loading to go slowly, right? So side to side hammer work here. You can stand up and do kind of hammer forward. And you can also stand up and do hammer backwards, right? So again, we want enough weight on these things where they're actually worth your time, but you can also add in dumbbell extensions, dumbbell curls, people do rice buckets. I'm a fan of all those kind of things. I just want someone to load their wrist appropriately in a way that makes it sore and stronger, but doesn't cause the pain to come back up. Okay. So side to side hammer work is okay. Like I said, backwards hammer works. Okay. Dumbbell wrist extensions, dumbbell curls, all that stuff is awesome. I would probably shoot for eight to 12 repetitions of two to three sets with weight. That's actually challenging, right? And that's going to be an error that I see is someone's just doing one pound in here, right? Like I promise you, if you're doing handstands and all sorts of circus stuff and tumbling, you're taking more than one pound on your wrist. So make sure you do stuff that is not painful, but it actually makes your forearm stronger, right? It makes your forearm get a little sore. The grip works kind of hard. We want that, right? We don't want to be pushing through pain. We also don't want to be going back to back days because if you're doing this correctly, it should be tough, right? It should be tough for you to do some wrist extensions, curls side to side, maybe some bicep curls, some tricep stuff, some grip work, some rice bucket. Your forearm should be tired. It should be sore. We want at least one day to recover in between to get that soft tissue stronger to get the muscle stronger and also maybe let the joint calm down if it is getting overworked a little bit. So big fan of really doing some local elbow strengthening. We're maybe more like that four to six week range where we're slowly getting back into stuff. And then lastly, I think the most important thing to do before we get back into gymnastics again or tumbling again is add in some compound strength. Okay. I see this all too often as somebody goes from resting, they do the uh, soft tissue work. They do the specific elbow joint stuff. They skip all the steps. They go right back to tumbling. They go right back to the hard surfaces. That is where people get really frustrated because it flares back up. So with a combination of softer surfaces, but also we can use dumbbells to our advantage here to start to slowly load the wrist before we're doing pushups, before we're doing handstands, before we're doing tumbling, right? So doing 20, 30, 40 pound dumbbell floor presses, also doing half kneeling overhead presses. It starts to mimic the loading that will come on wrist, then this naturally becomes things like push-ups or handstand shoulder taps or bear crawls, right? Things that actually put the wrist back in a weight bearing position. So I would really make sure we're doing single arm strength for a week. And then I would move on to push-ups and pike handstand taps and bear crawls. And then eventually you can get back to a softer surface, maybe like a tumble track or a sting mat on top of a floor. That's going to be really important. Okay. So six to eight reps is fine. Three to four sets a couple times a week, maybe three times per week. And again, we really want to make sure we're using weight. That's an error I see all too often as someone who's not actually using appropriately challenging weight. We don't want to go too fast, right? We don't want to go to the exercise, go from one day we're doing floor presses. The next day we're doing pushups. The next day we're doing handstands. That might be too rapid of a progression, but we can easily go maybe every other day for a week and then add in closed chain stuff and then add in the actual gymnastics basics or the circus basics or acro tumbling, whatever you're doing it on. Okay. 
Also make sure we're going really slow. You see Leah's doing a nice slow tempo up and down. Some people just blast these out real fast, but this is not a strength building exercise here. This is more so to expose the weight to wrist and uh, pressure, right? So we don't want to really focus on, I'm just getting my chest stronger. She's actually trying to put load through her wrist. That is the main purpose of this goal, okay? So if you're someone who's interested in gymnast wrist, you're a medical provider, say AT, PT, whoever, and you want to check out more on this and all sorts of other stuff, we do have an amazing three-day symposium coming up very quickly here. And actually the, the ticket uh, closing window is very fast. So if you've been waiting to jump on this and you've kind of uh, maybe put it off because you were busy, you only have a couple more weeks to get your tickets. So the first day, all medical care. We're going to talk about lower back pain. We're going to talk about growth plate injuries, uh, Achilles injuries and Achilles tears. We're going to talk about elbow OCD. We're going to talk about all sorts of different types of shoulder instability and rotator cuff irritations. That's all first day for medical providers. But the second day has about 20 lectures for women's and men's gymnastics. So fault bars, beam, floor basics, all sorts of mental health stuff and overcoming anxiety, competition, anxiety, and mental blocks. Some really great performance culture stuff. We also have some phenomenal lectures on the men's side, you know, high bar, parallel bars, rings, all sorts of personal development type stuff like that as well. Third day, all strength conditioning. So gymnastic strength and conditioning from some experts around the world, talking about lifting, talking about gymnastics, basics, everything you possibly want to know. Um, but if you're someone who works in gymnastics in any way, shape or form, or maybe you've been in circus or in some acro areas and you want to jump on this, make sure you do it now because we're starting to, again, not be able to get those tickets and more. But if you enjoyed this video and you just want to take home some nuggets of information and apply them to your life, I hope the information was helpful. If you want to win those free tickets to the symposium and also the free choice of your course, head down to the bottom, hashtag 24 shift, and just make sure you enter. We'll pick that in a couple of weeks. And then also make sure you hit the notification bell, the subscribe bell, so that you can hear all the new content that's coming up. Hope it was helpful.